Hey guys, I was just about done sorting, testing, boxing, and packing away all my tubes when what shows up today? More tubes. But these are tubes of a slightly different nature. What these are, for the most part, are new old stock tubes from the 20s and early 30s, which is not something you see every day. I was lucky enough to get these from another online friend over at the Video Karma uh, Vintage TV and Radio Forums. Um, now, I, I kind of was on the fence about buying these. I've got plenty of tubes already, and I don't really have sets that need these really early tubes. But what caught my eye was all these RCA Radiotron tubes. Because I have that Westinghouse WR8 set um, I have a series of videos on, which uses, uh, which, um, I should say, it's a Westinghouse radio, but at the heart of it is actually an RCA Radiola 82. And most of the tubes that were in that radio are no longer the RCA tubes that originally came with. I've got them spread out over here. Um, so actually amongst all these tubes, only one of them was actually a Radiotron. So I was hoping to put together a whole set. Uh, I'll get back to that in a minute. What I'd like to show you now is some of the more interesting items I pulled out of the box. For example, these are the earliest tubes, like this guy, which is a Radiotron with the really, really early globe type, but there's actually a glass uh, seal on top instead of in the base, and it's got these short peg pins on the, on the base. I've only seen these before, this is the first one I've ever actually held in my hand, so I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> Excited to have it, I should say. Um, and then uh, these strange guys, I've never seen anything like these before. Um, apparently, it's a special type of rectifier. Uh, the cool thing about most of these box tubes is not only is the original box with the awesome artwork, and most of these tubes have never been used, but I have the paperwork that came with them. So, recommended usage, the specs for the tubes, the patents, and uh, just all kinds of interesting vintage uh, info. Um, so apparently these are a special type of rectifier too, but they say to only use them in sets that were originally designed um, for it. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to do a little research on these and see exactly what they are, because they're uh, unusual looking, I think. Oh, and check this out, uh, Raytheon patented June 27th, 1922, and July 7th, 1925. So it gives you some idea of how old these are. Um, and then moving on, we've got the old, uh, well, they're 01 tubes to me, but they come as 201s, 301s, and so on. Uh, but really, they originally I believe they were just 01A tubes or 01 tubes. Uh, Cunningham, Radiotron, RCAs. Now, I was aware of the Cunningham name from, uh, I've got a number of other Cunningham tubes, and everybody's wondered what happened to the company. Well, these boxes right here solve that pretty easily. <laughs> On one side, RCA Radiotron, the other side, Cunningham. So, uh, I think it's pretty clear that RCA bought Cunningham at some point. A lot of these other tube makers went under during the uh, Depression in the early 30s, like Majestic, I think. These Majestic tubes are kind of cool because what they did is um, a lot of these tubes uh, and radios in the uh, like RF, IF stages wouldn't have uh, metallic shields around them to uh, shield out uh, external noise. Well, what this company did is they actually sprayed or spritzed, uh, I believe it's zinc, powdered zinc, and, uh, and coated the outside of the tube to form a metallic shield right on the tube itself. So that's kind of cool, I think. Uh, and, you know, again, these boxes, I think, are just so awesome. Majestic radio tube, mighty monarch of the air, uh, and so on. Oh, and here's another kind of cool one. Um, I believe they called these peanut tubes. It's an early, very early type of tube before they really kind of standardized on what tubes were going to be shaped like. All right, so moving on. So here was the, the main object of my buying these was all these Radiotron tubes. Now, the Radiola 82 calls for a type 80 tube, 
227s, 424s, and 245 output tubes. So I went hunting through all these tubes and you know what really caught my eye immediately was these 245 boxes because type 45 audio output tubes are pretty scarce and can fetch uh, good money for uh, a really good matched pair. And I found, I think, four or five boxes marked 245. However, <laughs> when I opened them up, I found out that appearances are, or things weren't quite what they seemed with these boxes. A lot of these boxes, probably about half of them, do not actually have inside of them what they say on the outside. But in some cases, it was even better. For example, this, this 45, um, when I popped it open, I actually had a, a type 250 inside which I believe is just about as scarce, if not more scarce. I don't have anything that needs it, but uh, pretty cool to have. You can see they're even bigger than the, uh, than the 45. It's a huge globe tube. And the other 45 boxes all had these guys in them, which at first I thought were cool too. I thought, hey, these must be audio output tubes because the plate structure looked very similar. But alas, no. These are Type 281s, which is really just a rectifier tube, uh, a full wave rectifier. And I guess they're not all that rare, all that desirable. I'm not even sure what these would go in because I've never come across this tube type before. Type 80, sure, but not an 81. Uh, oh, and some of the other ones had uh, type 71As in them, which are they're decent too. I've got one set that uh, uh, I can use these in, so I don't mind getting these at all. Um, also got this guy, a couple boxes that marked 247, which are also nice tubes to have, but again, <laughs> no, uh, except for one. But again, it wasn't what was marked on the box. This is not an RCA Radiotron 47, it's a uh, DeForest Audion 447, which is probably even rarer. DeForest is sometimes credited as uh, the inventor of the vacuum tube. I don't know about that, but he was certainly a pioneer in the, uh, in the field.